Uh, later, Power Metal Fan, Grifter says, Neko says, end back. Presents are wrapped. Another beer in the belly. It's a good night. Nice. Enjoy your Christmas. Uh, yes, definitely, Power Metal. Uh, enjoy your Christmas. Thanks for popping in here. Let's split up. And thank you all for sending power some love. Let's uh, let's go do this now. We got we got Rebecca with this gun. You know she cry cry with this gun. I think it's just keep pressing the left one. Yep, that's it. Just left twice. I think the, the this game is definitely uses the like um, overthinking thing egregiously. Like it uses it a lot. Like it's like, hey, the the solution's really easy. It just press this button like six times and you'll. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oof! <laughs> he got me good. He tagged me. What am I at? Caution? Yep. We gotta find some health. Um, sending love. Was that Killer Croc? <laughs> yes. These are like prototype uh, hunters. This way. Yep. Yep. This way. Okay, Twin Perfect is pretty cool. Definitely going to have to check more of them out. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, dude, if you're a Silent Hill fan and you like the Team Silent games, I cannot recommend that channel enough. Now, the problem is, is they don't really make content like that anymore. I think lately they've just been like, they make videos like why you're wrong about Man of Steel and why you're wrong about Batman vs. Superman. And I guess they, I don't know if they're doing it to troll. Um, I'm going to guess because if you know their personalities, it seems like that. I mean, they may genuinely like those movies. I don't know. But they, they like, for people who really understand the Silent Hill universe and and did a really great job making those videos, I watched their, like, Why You're Wrong About Batman vs. Superman. I'm like, are they, am I being trolled right now? Because I feel like, <laughs> I feel like the, this can't be made by the same. These people like Silent Hill the way they do and they understand all the meanings and stuff. And then, and then they, they review Batman vs Superman it just seems like such a weird it seems so weird <laughs> uh, but uh, but I, I would say the real Silent Hill experience that they make is a great time it's it's so good to watch I think I've watched it in, in its entirety like 22 whatever however many episodes it is I've watched the entire thing probably like 10 times um, that's how much I enjoy it and their their senses of humor are phenomenal and they're, they're snarky and they're just my just my kind of people for sure um, and I think they, they refused to play Silent Hill Downpour. So what they did was, um, I forget how the, the order of this goes. Uh, oh, wait, there's something that tells me. Let's find it. Yeah, it's right here. Six souls imprisoned within the chains of death. Rekindle the flames of life from the spirit of the weak. So it goes from weak to strong. No amount of cunning can match the speed of my supple limbs. And then he's cunning, right? I am the king of all I survey. No creature can escape my grasp. The strong prey upon the weaker. My sharp wits allow me to bring down even the greatest horned beast. I dance freely through the air. Oops. Capturing a legless prey. Okay. So... creep up on my victims in the legless silence and conquer even the mightiest of kings with my poison. So the he kills the the king, the tiger. The tiger can kill this the horse. This thing swoops down and kills the snake. The deer gets captured by the wolf. So I guess we start with the deer.
Uh, how, okay, how am I a good friend if I don't lure you to an island full of bioweapons, Shamley says. <laughs> uh, why you're wrong videos about anything subjective are always just clickbait. Yeah, that's what I figured. Um, yeah, and that's what I assumed. Like, when I first saw theirs, I was like, really this? And then I was like, oh, yeah, they're just, they're just trolling. Um, could be parody. YouTube is ripe with why you're wrong videos. Uh, and that could be it too. I mean, it could, when you know their sense of humor, that's why I'm saying I'm like, when I first saw it, I was kind of like taken aback. Like, ah, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't interpreting it as a joke, but the more I thought about it after I watched it, I was like, it could have just been a joke. And I maybe just wasn't getting that. Um, like I said, when you know their sense of humor, it seems likely. Um, all right. So I think now the horse, because he can outrun the wolf but he can't out outrun the tiger or lion whatever the hell it is but then that will get killed by the snake and then the eagle will grab the snake Hey, we did it. Sweet. Nice to see they agree with me about two being the best Silent Hill, so um I'll cut them some slack. They um it's funny, they I think they do like two a lot, but they also don't like that two is the most popular one for the reasons that that aren't their reasons, I think. Um I, I can't remember. There's something about it because they love one and three, and they they definitely are big on one and three. Uh, but yeah, two. It, it's hard. I don't know. It's uh, to me two seems like a clear winner, but only by a little. Because I think one and three are fantastic. I didn't appreciate one and three that much at first, and then I think it was like maybe six. No. Yeah, like five years ago, like 2012. No, it was 2011. Yeah, no, 2012. It was 2012. I um, I replayed on a friend system, Silent Hill One, and was like, oh, and like as an adult now, I'm interpreting these this game in a much different way. Like the, probably the way it was meant. Because when I first played Silent Hill One, what was that, 1999? Um, I was 17, and there was a lot of stuff that probably just went way over my head, or that I didn't pay attention to, or just me being like a Metal Gear and Resident Evil fan. I didn't. Maybe I didn't pay attention as much to the subtleties of that game, uh, and a lot j I just missed. So um, playing it as an like an adult, I was like, you know, as like a thirty-year-old adult, I was like, this is very cool. Like I'm like I, I don't know. There was I just dug it. I just thought it was fantastic. Um, and I understood more. And then it was about like a year after that, maybe when I came across the twin perfect videos, I want to say it was like 2013 or 14 when I watched their videos the first time and was just like, Whoa, these guys are really smart. Uh, and, um, and when they make that, I think they've made like one or two mistakes and they actually mentioned that they're like, Hey, you know what? You're right. We did make this mistake. So I was like, Oh, they listen to criticism pretty well, which is something I struggle with, uh, at, at that time. I probably a lot better at it now, but, um, I still don't like getting criticism, but I'll at least go, all right, okay, what is it? What is? It? What do I have to do? And then someone will tell me, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. I can do that. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I got someone to watch that stuff because their their content is great. Um, they said, oh, three, nah, it's three. They said three was the best. You just want me to say two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, seriously though, who builds these locks? No kidding. Right. Um, yes, three, they said three. I'm so sorry. I, I, that's what I thought. I, when you said two, or maybe I read it wrong. I was like, no two. I can't, I don't remember two being their favorite, but, um, yeah, three is their favorite. That's right. One is still amazing for sure. And yeah, one is definitely freaking amazing. All right, so I keep hearing about this new movie, Bright, is trash. Is that the Will Smith uh, movie? That not that the director of Suicide Squad? David Ayer? 
Um, doesn't sound good. Let's leave this. No, actually, we're gonna go leave it upstairs because that's where we're gonna head to next. Um, oh yeah, over here. But my friend, one of my friends, uh, recommended it. Anyone have uh, an opinion? I have not seen it. Um, I just know it's from the director of Suicide Squad. And uh, that's all I know about it. He's also done other movies. I don't think Suicide Squad is obviously his only movie. I think he did something with police officers, like Cop Watch or something. Jake Gyllenhaal, maybe? I can't remember. Um, I can't remember his previous work right now. Um, I played it earlier this year. Still very good, though. The graphics are not holding up at all, though. Yeah, no, Resi I mean, Silent Hill 1. Yeah, no, definitely not. Um, haven't seen it, John. We says, Suicide Squad could have made for, like, three pretty good movies instead of one not-so-great one. They had way too much plot in that movie. Oh, my God, I know. They sure did. That's a good way to describe that movie. Run, Rebecca. Oof, got her out of the way just in time. You can control her with the other joystick, um, which is great <laughs> that you can do that. But sometimes I freak out and I, I, I panic and I don't, I don't get her to do what I'm asking her to do. Um, what was it? That walk. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> that walk, indeed. All right, so we got the vice grip now, so we can solve this puzzle in the next room. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry I don't have an opinion on Bright. I just, uh, I have not seen it. Ooh, Billy. No! Dang it. We both got hit. Of course I'm on caution, Billy's not. And I'm on like orange caution. Mother effer. Alright, so here's where Billy is like the world's best piano player, and Rebecca's like, What's a piano? Watch. Play the piano, yes. I understand subverting expectations, too, because you're like, oh, it's Rebecca, the, the puzzle from the first game. She played Moonlight Sonata, even though she said, hey, I'm not very good. I need to practice. Um, still, it's like I know in their head they're like, well, she can't play the piano this one because she's got to practice in the next game. So she's she should know the basics of a piano, but she can't play every song and then we'll subvert expectations by having Billy play the piano. So I appreciate stuff like that sometimes, but it's just like I said, when you pile everything on and give Billy everything, almost everything, um, and you give Rebecca barely anything, it just comes across as like, all right. And, but then again, you, then you read the interviews where the, the producers actually said, yeah, we don't like Rebecca as a character. Um, and you're like, what? I'm like, alone. <laughs> like, like, why not? I mean, why, why make a game around her? And I think it was because it was one of those projects that was just, it felt cursed. When they were making this, this originally, this game was going to be on the Nintendo 64, um, Res Evil Zero. And it just went through like a, a bunch of development hell problems. And they just never got it, uh, you know, basically off the ground. Um, and uh, then at that point, the GameCube was already being developed and they, they had made a deal with Nintendo. And Nintendo wanted exclusive stuff for, for the GameCube. So I think they helped fund a little bit of the, the the this version. They were like, hey, no, we want you to use the engine from the Resident Evil remake that you're working on and make Resident Evil Zero look better, sound better, you know, everything. And it caused them to change a lot of the plot, a lot of the storyline. Uh, Rebecca's clothes even, because she was dressed um, 
a lot more closely to her Resident Evil 1 version where she had like a white cap on and stuff. Um, but in, then they did the remake, so they're like, all right, we want her to look like the remake version. So her character model doesn't change that much, um, which makes sense continuity-wise, but it's just like a lot of things they changed from that first uh, version. I guess I'll watch it then, but if it sucks, I'm gonna yell at Bezo about it. Okay. Well, hey, if it if it's good, let us know. Like I'm I'm interested in uh, hearing your opinion on it, cause uh, I mean I'm I have the apartment to myself for the next couple of days, so I'm gonna watch this show on Netflix called The Toys That Made Us. I really want to watch that, and then after I watch that, I might check out Bright, uh, maybe. But I'd love to hear someone's opinion on it th uh, that I you know trust first. This episode is called Gathering the Three Tablets. So we got two. I kind of don't want to go in this last room coming up, but I'm just going to do it because... Uh, because we there's like health in there. I think there's something else in there, but I think mainly health, so... Although I think by going in here, we trigger another Marcus monster out in that hallway there. So that's going to be a thing, but I want Rebecca to heal, so. Is there anything else in here? Apparently not. And there's just herbs in there. And bullets and Molotovs. Okay. All of that just to trigger this boss, or not boss, but like enemy. Uh, yeah, I remember correctly, that was a train was a majority of RE0. Yes, in the original Resident Evil 0, the, the train was most of the game. No, get away, Rebecca. Oh, good. She didn't get hit. Um, good. She didn't get, it didn't get on her. Um, Nero's eyes at this scene. <laughs> yep. Leeches, you mother. Um, they could have really had her do this though and not have her do it well. Ah, that's true. She didn't do it perfect to unlock the door for Chris anyway. No, that's true too. Uh, and I think she even says, like, she's like, yeah, I played piano once, like, when I was a kid. I know uh, the basics. Um, and it was pretty much just there, so, you know. Oh, good. You know, you're in your, your, something you've learned in everyday life is gonna help us in this scenario. Um, Oh yeah, we gotta go outside. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's like you know, character moments. I'm fine with them. But uh, yeah, for this one, I was kind of like, ah, yeah. I mean, if I'm okay with her not doing it overall, like I said, if they gave her other things, like kind of like to do, because like I said, the game kind of direct, it kind of leans you into Billy. It's kind of like, it kind of, you know, pushes you over towards him. And I think they did like a lot of market study of what men of a certain age who would be playing this game what they liked in action heroes i guess um and they factored some of that into his design they're like oh okay he's you know he's macho he's you know he's, he talks to women like hey you've been dreaming about me you know cupcake uh and it's like you know he's uh, seems to always know what to do but then has like a uh, like a 
tragic backstory of being in the military and disobeying orders and you know it's like he kind of just yeah you're kind of like whatever but uh, Billy I think isn't beyond the point of where you can't make a great character out of him and I think he has all the makings of an interesting character. They just, I just, in this game, I just think I got overly upset the fact that I was excited to play as Rebecca again, and then I ended up my first playthrough of this game just finding myself playing as Billy a lot. And I was just like, why am I keep moving to Billy? Like, why won't, why am I doing that? Um, and uh, really was just like these little subtle things. I think, I don't know if it was Twin Perfect, but it was uh, some, or maybe it was my two be the two best friends that play video games, but one of them talked about it in their video, and I was like, that's interesting. Like, I felt that way when I played the game the first time. I felt like I was being guided, um, but not like in a way a game should guide you, where it's like, all right, you gotta get to point A, B, and tell a story. Like, you learn all this story about Billy Cohen, and you you get all, all, two whole games, and you don't learn anything about Rebecca Chambers. <laughs> like, there's no flashback to her life in this game, and there's no flashback to like um her life in Resident Evil One Remake. So she's just like the medic. It's like, what? And she's just like this some young girl that ended up on the team, and you're just like, I would like to know about these characters. So I was just upset that they had they were like, oh, we're gonna go back and tell more secrets to the Umbrella Corporation. And we're gonna do it with Rebecca, and it's like okay, well, cool. And then I just feel like they didn't deliver on that. So, but that's just me. If I remember correctly, the train was the majority of Resident Evil Zero and sixty four. Yes, for sure. Speaking of the remake, I don't like that game at all. Crimson Heads ruined it for me. Whoa! <gasps> Respect everyone's opinion. Respect everyone's opinion. Seek. Respect everyone's opinion. Just kidding. <laughs> um. Let me know if it's good. I'm off Monday and need things to watch, John Lee says, uh, for Bright. Okay. Um, really, I, you're actually, the I think, the first person I met that didn't like... I'm not even exaggerating there. I think out of everyone I've talked to that's played Resident Evil games, most people enjoy the remake a ton. I, it's a, very interesting. Watching them grenade and Magnum Slugs is, is uh, so absurd. <laughs> Billy was a combination of Carlos and Chris with less personality and bad pickup lines. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. They made him action man, um, which I am never a fan uh, of too much. It can be done well, like Predator. I love that movie. All right, we're going to give Billy all three stones. We'll make him open the door. But that's just because I need more slots for... Um, what's her name? Rebecca. All right, and then we're going to save, and I think we're pretty much done with this house. Wait, where'd my ink ribbons go. Oh, I brought them in another room. Oh, well. I guess we're not saving. Uh, I mean, in terms of the way Rebecca worked in RE1, it makes sense that she can't really do much in this game, but still, the way Stars works, that always seemed pretty half-assed. Well, my thing, too, was with this game was, all right, well, then don't use Rebecca. If you're going to make it a prequel just make Billy, I think originally one of the original concepts for this game was Billy and another random girl. It wasn't um, Billy and Rebecca. And that to me probably would have made more sense to do. Because uh, like you said, it's almost built into where Rebecca can't do too much in this game and can't learn too much because if she does, then why didn't she mention all this during the events of Resident Evil 1 or whatever? Which I'm sure she did as they were flying in a helicopter at the ending of Resident Evil 1 flying away I'm sure she told them about everything um, but uh, yeah there, so it, it raises that question too so I totally get where you're coming from with that um, but still like they um, I'll check it out Roger. they they really did they really just don't give her much to do so I would have liked it with it maybe without Rebecca or um, or play as two different stars members play as like Kenneth and Enrico or something like that. Because remember, Enrico in Resident Evil 1, he did know about Umbrella. He knew there was a traitor on the team, and you even see him pop up once or twice in this game in cutscenes talking to Rebecca, and then he just disappears for no reason. He like he doesn't stay with Rebecca. And you're like, why? Like, what kind of team leader does that? Um, so, um, yeah, for me, I, sh I would have been like, ah, just 
you could have had Rebecca make a few appearances and then people would be like, Hey, it's Rebecca, but she's not learning anything, you know, because you know, she, she's going to figure it all out in Resident Evil one. So in this one we have Enrico and maybe he's trying to get to Rebecca. He finds that she's alive. He's like, I got to tell her, I got to pass this information on. And like, maybe that's the struggle of him in the game is he keeps missing her. She takes an elevator and he has to go take the stairs. And when he gets down there, he sees like, you know, he has to fight a monster and he can't get to her or whatever. Um, so yeah, that would have that to me would have worked more, and it would have elevated the maybe the drama and the fear in the game a little bit, um, where you're like, oh man, Enrico's learning everything he needs to tell the stars members, like, but then he can't get to the stars members in the game, you know. And then when he finally does, it's he's wounded at the end of the game, and he kills the final monster, but he's wounded, and he knows there's a traitor on the team, and he limps into the, you know, like um, catacombs that they find him in in Res Evil One. So I don't know, just me, just spitballing. I have the power of hindsight, so it's easy to come up with ideas after the fact. But that's, you know, I would have liked something more in that direction. Let's regroup. Okay. Neko says, stars are supposed to be badasses. She could get in if she wants someone, if she wasn't somewhat more useful than just the medic. Well, that's true, too. Also, she flipped and survived for Chris to, to even find her, then takes some sort of skill, and that takes some sort of skill, in my opinion. No, I, I think she's a survivor. That definitely. I agree with you there. See, your idea would have been awesome. Well, again, I, <laughs> that's nice of you to say, but I, I, I have the power of hindsight, so it's like, eh. Um, it's easier to come up with ideas after the fact when you see what they've already done and you improve on it. That's why I like being an editor. Let's split up. Um, gotcha. And that's why I liked working in comics and stuff as an editor because I could talk to a writer before the story's even written or while it's being written and we could bang out ideas together. And, be like, and if they go, oh, I have this idea, I go, well, here is how we can make it better. And, I, and you, as an editor, you do have the power of hindsight because you can look at what's written on the page or you can develop as you go. Um, so you have a little bit of hindsight there because you can see what the original ideas were and you can help improve on them. Uh, that's that's probably my favorite thing about editing is making something that's good better, if possible. I mean, it's the goal. It doesn't always work. Sometimes, you, you know, even as an editor, you come up with bad ideas. Um, but yeah, that's where you also got to trust in the writer as well. All right, so we can save here. So let's save save here. I love this music. I have all of the soundtracks for Resi the games up. I have, I don't have five and six. I have zero one. I have like three different soundtracks for Resident Evil one. I think I have two different soundtracks for Resident Evil two and like a techno remix soundtrack. I don't know, whatever. It's got four tracks on it. Um, and then I got uh, Resident Evil 3, Code Veronica, and uh, I think two soundtracks for Code Veronica as well, Japanese and English. Or not Japanese and English, but there's two different versions. One was like two discs, I think, and one was one disc. Um, but yeah. Big fan. Big fan of the Resident Evil music. I like the Silent Hill music too. A lot of it's just, like, Resident Evil I like because it's like ambient noises sometimes. It's just, it's just crickets. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's this track is called Crickets. Um, you didn't like RE4 either. You know what's funny about that is when RE4 came out, I kind of dug it f at, for the gameplay, but I didn't really care for the story, and that's and I still stand by that. Um, oh shit! Uh, I'm not a big fan of the, the. I think the premise is great. Uh, oh, that was an achievement. Get picked up by him, huh? Um, cool. Yeah, uh, I think the premise is great. Evil group kidnaps the uh, president's daughter, infects her with zombie virus, and plans to uh, ransom her back to the president. Hey, for $2, million, or $2 billion, I will give you your daughter back, not knowing she's infected with a zombie virus. And then, then she turns, when they hand her over to her dad, bites the president, infection throughout the White House, infection throughout Washington. Great plan. Super awesome plan. Um, 
but then they really just don't do anything with that idea in it and uh and it just you're kind of like uh all right whatever um yeah they're like oh but we have to have leon come in and ruin that plan it's like yeah but that was such a good plan <laughs> um that I would have liked to seen that like pan out like it would be like if the game started with the president's daughter being ran like brought back and then you're Leon in the White House and the outbreak happens <laughs> like obviously they probably couldn't have done that but it, that would have just been crazy crazy cool and then you're like all right I gotta go we gotta clean out the White House that's the first level of the game you stop the infection from getting anywhere the bad guys are pissed about that so now they're you know they're either bringing their forces over or you got to go over to that other country and like hunt them down or something you know i had the soundtrack for the first four silent hill games no doubt i love those soundtracks howdy what's up arabian luffy is that how, how i pronounce that luffy hello how are you happy holidays layers of fear with some pretty great music as well in the main room i have not played that game but i own it we will have to get into that at some point we'll have to do another horror month Someone asked me if I was going to do zombie month again in January. I don't think I can because of my work schedule. Um, but maybe we will do zombie month again this year. Maybe for my birthday in May. If you guys are down for that. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Arabian, how's it going, my friend? Welcome to the stream. Everybody send some love to our new friend in the chat. Um... Actually, Layers of Fear was great music throughout, John Lee says. All right. I believe you. I believe you, John Lee. 